And uh, regarding Jude, there's nothing, I mean, I really can't give any kind of an introduction for him because people know him and, and he's been the greatest player you know, for Indian uh, state. But a couple of things, we also uh, just made a small, uh, some of the photos which we had uh, through you know, the internet, uh, which we figured out. So, this is a couple of photos with Daniel Pillai, people with uh, WSH. Anush Abey was this, we were at the stadium. With Sunil Shetty, I forgot the actual video of that. Yeah, so a uh, couple of these pictures, but then uh, basically just to give a small, this thing is achievements which speaks for himself. Uh, basically, he was one of the 1995 was named one of the uh, best seven players in the world by FIH, right? And uh, in 1995, he was also given an Arjuna Award from the President of India, and in uh, 1993 to 1995, he captained the Indian national team. He also he played in the Olympics of 1988 and 1992 in, in uh, and Barcelona, right? And also uh, right now, and also he played major leagues in uh, France and Belgium. And he was also in Singapore. You know, he was working with the Sport Education Club over there as a player club coach over there. And now uh, recently, you know, as you all see the, the new turnout of uh, hockey league, just like uh, we had a World Series hockey. He was a coach for the Karnataka Lions. And the way I mean, some of you guys have not followed the hockey there, uh, just to say, if, uh, I mean, the Karnataka Lions were not doing that really great, and they worked on as of there is saying that you know they really came up up there and they were played for semi finals to that. You know, uh, if I was actually following from a Karnataka perspective, it's like the points are very low. But I don't know what turned out. I really want to know from Arjun sir and uh, Duke sir that it's, it, it, somehow it's something changed upon. They all came in and they got into semi finals and they were there to the semi finals over there. So I would really uh, please I ask you to come down here and please do share your experience of all of this. Yeah. Yeah, one more thing is we are currently running an academy called Jufix Academy Trust where uh, he is actually you know, uh, teaching the underprivileged kids a life skills. You know? it's basically, it's not making him to become a great hockey player. He's teaching them how to be a good citizen for India, what are life skills through a medium of hockey. All right. So, I really thank you for that. So, please. Thank you, Davi. Uh, Davi, sir. Thank you. Uh, hi, guys. Good evening. Uh, I'm uh, not a very good orator, but I will try. Speaking for 20 minutes about the Olympics is going to be tough. Well, I'll give you all my experiences about it, but I'm uh, you're most welcome to uh, do a question and a Q&A session that uh, probably complete the 20 minutes if you're strict about it. Uh, well, uh, born, born in Bangalore, uh, playing, uh, having started my hockey career in Karnataka, uh, coming from a very good school which is famous for hockey, St. Jemin's High School. Uh, it was it was every kid's dream to play for India and uh, hockey there were hockey sticks at home I don't know from where it came but there were hockey sticks at home and uh, right from the age um, uh, I think nine years or so I always dreamt about playing for uh, for the country and uh, uh, eventually it happened in 19, 1983. But uh, we were just excited playing for the country and uh, it was a big thing. But we didn't know along the way Olympics was such a big event. In fact, I didn't know when I played it as well. I didn't know until I was much older where I realized it was the spectacle of uh, the world in, in the sports arena. So having said that, uh, my first taste of the Olympics was uh, in 1988 uh, at Seoul, uh, Korea. Um, it was an absolute wonderful experience. Uh, right from the time uh, we knew that uh, we were going for the Olympics, uh, it starts off at that, at that moment itself. And then we, uh, we are in the training camps, we play hard, uh, anything could happen. You could miss your Olympics, but you know, life was, uh, fate was good to me that I got to actually manage and go for the Olympics uh, at Korea. Okay, going to Korea again, the, uh, let me start by um, the excitement of, you know, the village. The village is a place where, uh, it's a huge place just out of the city uh, where it's completely cordoned off, security at the highest level and then you have everything inside the village. So those were, 
those are the most exciting things. You know, rather everything was exciting. You know, the more the more you, the way you get accredited going into the Olymp Olympics, uh, the 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 village itself, the way the roads are named. Uh, it's named by former, uh, you know, the, the the different venues of the past Olympics. So every everything you look around and uh, there's always something to catch on. You know, and when you're at the Olympics, and then of course you live in a, a well-furnished uh, apartment with uh, everything everything there for you, and uh, not to forget the 24 hours uh, restaurants that we have. Uh, and not one; they have sometimes two or three restaurants. Uh, at one Olympics, I think the Barcelona, they had even McDonald's there. I don't know who got it in there, but... So, so you have everything. In fact, you have a theater in there. You have a theater, you have a saloon, you have everything. You don't need to go out of the Olympics at all. So, these were the lovely things that we got to see and experience um, at the Olympics. Of course, uh, then you come across, uh, you know, if you're a holy guy, you've got your temple, you've got your church, where you go, go to church in the morning, you get up and walk into church, and there you get to see different athletes, sometimes the very famous ones. So these, these are the exciting things. Then of course, uh, you sit and dine with the, the best of people. I remember only watching Gabriela Sabatini uh, playing on television and there she was sitting right in front of us and uh, we could enjoy a meal, talk to her, take photographs. I mean, what can I say? It was simply awesome. Everything was just awesome. Then you have the goodies. They give you a lot of goodies at the Olympics, uh, uh, everything with the Olympic uh, uh, emblem on it. And uh, so as, as you can see, there's so many lovely things that happen when you go to the Olympics. Of course, the final thing is about performance. Now, that's an important thing. Uh, at the 80th Olympics, uh, we, we were in a group with uh, Great Britain, Great Britain and uh, I think Germany. They were the two strong teams. And uh, we finished our, our our five games, we were six in a group. On the other side, there were six. We finished our five, uh, we rather finished our four games and we were going to the fifth game against Great Britain and uh, all we needed was a draw to go into the semi-finals. And uh, let me tell you, semi-finals can go any side, any way. It can go any way and on a given day, if um, things uh, go well for us, you are there in the final. So that's how close we were and uh, we just needed a draw to go into the, into the semis. And uh, and the score at the first half was 0-0, zero, zero. and it, it, and it was just a, and we were playing well. And uh, the second half started with uh, some bad uh, substitutions, and that got us down 3-0. And uh, now when I look back, I'm still a, I'm still a coach now. And uh, when I look back, it's very bitter. The memories are very bitter as to how close we were, and then we couldn't make it into the into the semis because of certain reasons, you know. And uh, so that ended, uh, we lost 3-0, uh, but we had to pull our socks up and uh, play for the placing match and try to be within the six. Because those days, coming five and six wasn't a big thing. It's just about trying to, trying to just, you know, finish respectfully and, and come on. So we ended up playing, uh, winning the next two games and uh, finishing fifth in the Olympics. That was my first Olympics in 88, where we finished fifth. Uh, of course, the opening and the closing ceremonies are another big, uh, big event where it's uh, where you, you share a common ground. Everyone shares a common ground uh, with all the top athletes, and uh, you kind of feel relieved. It's all over. The pressure is over, and then you just walk around, let yourself loose, and then of course you you're back home. But having said that, again, you 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 have worked so hard. Many there I know I know many many very very good players who you may know, have played uh, uh, a lot of very good hockey but then they never got the stag of an Olympian simply because they were injured or they were you know dropped or they were, for some for something could have happened to them and then yet you have some players who have played four Olympics like Danraj Pillay has played four Olympics it's an amazing feat you know and then there are some I think Leander Leander was with me in one of the Olympics Leander Pace uh, he is play, I think he's going in for his fifth Olympics if I'm not mistaken sixth, sixth, sixth Olympics I've lost count. So, I mean, that's an incredible uh, feat. You know? And so, of course, you do get a tag as an Olympian. You work, you work and play hard to try and become an Olympian. I mean, that's not the end of it all, but then it's, it's a tag. It's, it's a nice tag to have uh, to say you're an Olympian. So, those are things of my first Olympics. I must tell you about my second one, which was in 92. Again, another bitter one. 
where the team was uh, uh, very very good again uh, prior to the Olympics. Uh, we we had a we had a, a unbeaten uh, streak of uh, 18 17 to 18 matches just before the Olympics. And I don't know whether we had we, we didn't peak right or uh, I don't I didn't know those terms those days. But then we went into the Olympics Olympics as as a real uh, you know medal uh, medal prospect. But uh, we ended up going to the village very early. I must share this. It's a bit embarrassing, but then this is exactly what happened. That we we were training and we were at this this level. This uh, our fitness and everything was up there. But once we went to the village, we went early to acclimatize, but there wasn't much discipline from the whole team. You can, you can actually get carried away, you know, going into the village. If you don't uh, discipline yourself properly, you could probably be, you know, overeating, uh, you know, or, or probably, you know, not, not sleeping well, watch, you know, uh, coming back. Because things are open quite late as well in the, in the village. Uh, so, a lot of things happened, but then we, we didn't start well at all and we finished a disappointing 7th so that's how bad it was that, that was at the 92, uh, 92 Olympics in Barcelona and just before that like I said we had a 17 or 18 match unbeaten run I think we must have uh, played a goalless draw or sort of a draw or three, or 3 or 4 games but at least 14 wins we've had for me that was the worst uh, disappointment you know, uh, because the team was so good so so actually when I look back now, it's nice to be an Olympian. I can sum it up this way, yeah? it's nice to be an Olympian. But definitely not enough if you can't win a medal. And for me, that's my biggest disappointment, being an Olympian. Where I know we could have definitely won a medal. But uh, there were many factors. Uh, the way the sport is governed in the country, the players themselves. A lot of uh, wrongs all put together is what result we got. And uh, for me, that was the greatest disappointment being an Olympian. So that's the downside of being uh, an Olympian. So uh, we, we, now it's getting difficult. As you can see, it's getting difficult to even qualify. Those days, we didn't have a problem. We, even if we went for a qualifying round, we went through quite easily. But now most countries are, are playing very, very, uh, very, very good. So if uh, like uh, Dhruv says, uh, five, uh, fifth place, the Olympics will be like as good as winning a medal. Given the present situation, it's really, really tough. So, I guess yeah, that that basically in a in a in a nutshell, that's my Olympic experiences. Uh, thanks, well, thanks, fantastic for your insights about the Olympics. Uh, right? uh, any question answers? Any queries? Well, not okay. Okay. <laughs> 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 okay, so I have just uh, so. Uh, you were talking about 1988 uh, Olympics, I was in 7th standard and I remember, uh, I, I don't think it was that there was a live telecast but there was a radio commentary and I, I stopped over and the morning, in, I mean the match, the, the, the final uh, against England that, you know, I was just going to school and then we just stopped over and uh, you were listening to the commentary and the moment uh, we considered one goal, we were like all disappointed. So that was like, you know, going back to my school days. <laughs> So that was a nice thing. Uh, other one very funny thing I just noticed you though so Argentina plays well in you know in the in the world hockey these days, but then why are you wearing a football association t shirt? <laughs> <laughs> I just call it the <laughs> No, no, it's an other different thing that most of I mean a lot of you know I have played Argentina fan football. No, I'm also a fan of Argentina. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Okay, next question? As you are a grandmaster, ask you a technical question. Uh, when I played hockey, it was grass and then we became astro turf, and now I find a blue turf. Can you please like what is the difference between the astro turf and the blue turf? I think one is green and the other is blue. <laughs> <laughs> I really mean that because I don't see a reason why they had to change the green to blue, or honestly. Maybe Arjun should explain that to you better because I think it's a very stupid thing because I was at the Azlarsha just uh, a few week, a few week, uh, rather a week, a week back, and uh, I was watching the match live uh, at uh, Malaysia. And I don't find anything good about the blue turf. Uh, green was soothing to the eye, and it was very colourful as well, uh, um, with the white ball and the background, and this kind of looks uh, definitely out of place. Blue with pink at the side. 
I really don't know why and who did it. And I always believe you don't have to fix something that's not broken. And I, I really didn't see what, what is the reason to, to do uh, what they've done. You talked about your bitter experience. So, it's a personal person kind of thing. You know, how you reconcile really with yourself uh, after a so many period of time and you think, okay, I have done it or I have not done it. No, I, I see, I see, uh, I don't know if Arjuna agrees with me, I, I don't really relish uh, the, the people people uh, kind of uh, giving you the importance. I, I really don't relish that much. Because simply, uh, like if you come home, you will never see any of my medals or anything. I think my friends will tell you that I don't keep anything at home because I just feel underachieved. I just feel we did not win a medal when I, when I knew I... I could have won it. More so because now I'm, I'm, I'm a coach, I coach as well. So I look back and see all the mistakes of the players, the coaches, and that's a huge disappointment. So I'm just bitter with myself. So how do you reconcile your thing? Uh, well, uh, whenever I think about it, it's bad, but I just have to go through with it, yeah. How do you prepare before and after? Sorry? How do you prepare yourself before and after? Uh, just being positive, uh, you know, run, running the match through your mind and being positive um, and not trying, trying to stay away from the negative uh, part of anything that, that comes to your mind, you know. Try and being positive and uh, basically running through the match and uh, being confident. Uh, what is the problem with uh, other sports being looked down upon right now? We meet the government, we the public, cricket seems to be on top. Why do you think that will happen? Although you know now you have WSL, it's still even when a man who was presenting he seemed to be more cricket, IPL and what do you think of beating other sports from coming to the front? I think this, that's a whole, uh, it's a huge topic actually. It's a, see sometimes we try to play in the cricket, uh, cricket, the sport of cricket, you know. They have taken cricket to another level. And the hockey is, is badly managed, it's uh, very, very badly managed. What exactly do you mean? It's everything. It's everything. It's absolutely everything. Everything that you want to name is 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 bad with the with the way it is being managed now. Uh, so we really can't blame cricket as such, you know, because they no matter what they have still taken the game to some levels, and it's become very popular, you know. And I'm glad. Uh, I'm really. Uh, I, I can tell you that he's really thinking out of the box, and and, uh, and I wish him all the success that he's thought of something. Uh, it's a very, very, very uh, great great thing that he's done thinking about hockey. And also, I think, uh, from a tactical point of view and every other point, he's done a great thing by going into hockey. And I really wish him all success because, like I said, this this country, it's the number two sport. It's a national game. And if governed well, I'm sure it can be in the top six. I would only say top six. I mean, you tell me which sport in India, uh, team sport, can you name it that they are the top ten? I don't think so. And cricket, I don't want to talk. There are only about 10, 12 countries playing or 15 countries. This is a global sport. And if you finish top six, which they can easily do if it's governed well. And why not he market those players? Brilliant. I think it's brilliant that he's thinking of hockey. I just said everything. You, you know, like someone asked me, what is wrong with hockey? I said everything, and I stopped. I had to say that, you know, and I really, literally meant because it's, it's just it's sad, but that's a state, that's a state of uh, uh, the game. And it's nice to know something like sitting here to hear two players are being uh, managed. Those are big words for us. It was big words. We never had anything like that. But it's great to have, in spite of the sport not being consistent. It's great to have uh, players being managed. Hopefully, that's the start, and you know, the the reputation comes up. Uh, sir, cricket is an extremely popular sport in India. And every look in corner is some I mean, five-year-old, six-year-olds playing cricket. And I was talking to Mr. Baskar. Uh, he was telling me that it's the 1983 World Cup that changed the way cricket is looked in India. He was. Uh, 
telling me about how Mr. Gavaskar and others would come and watch a match when the Indian hockey team would be participating. The hockey players prior to 1983, when television wasn't very popular, they received the same kind of treatment today how Goni or Sachin Tendulkar would get. Um, I'm sure you would have been a part of that generation. Mm -hmm. Every sport you need to go on. So you, and, and, and Sachin, Sachin Tendulkar scores one century, you will see a thousand what a you know, more uh, lack of approach you bring to, you know, wanting to be like Tendulkar. Mm -hmm. So hockey probably acts the role model today. I'm sure you must have been a part of the generation where uh, we had a lot of celebrity hockey players. Can you talk, uh, tell us about that experience and also bringing what can we do to bring role models in the likes of some people or some class and all of this? So once we go, this is the last question for you and then get, the other question can be taken offline. Uh, talking about celebrity, the time I played, uh, uh, for me it was an absolute honor because in 1988, sorry, 1990 I was in school where my school principal had invited the 1980 gold medal winning team to our school and we had to present them with medals. And there was this uh, Mohammed Shai, who was the most famous player. And um, uh, it was great that within, uh, within three years I was actually playing with him. I couldn't believe it. So he was a he was a huge hero for all sports, for all hockey players. But like I said, it, sport wasn't marketed well. Otherwise, we had role models. We had great role models like Mohammed Shai. Today we've got uh, Dallas Pillay, we've got Arjun, we've got uh, um, um, so many great players. It's just that, like I said, again going back, it's just not governed well. You know? if, the, if the sport was governed well, if the, if the player was given his due, uh, his dues, I'm sure you 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 would have seen. Arjunal uh, uh, comment commentating or you would have seen uh, uh, say Mark Patterson in the role of Ravi Shastri. You see, we don't get to see any of that. It's simply because it's not governed well, like unlike uh, cricket. So it's just sad. <laughs> Thank you.